Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. I've got the Ohio River behind me, and today we're going to Alcasan headquarters to find out basically what happens when you flush a toilet in Pittsburgh. And to explain to us how it all works, we've got Doug Jackson, who is the Director of Operations and Maintenance here. So, Doug, like, where are we? What are we looking at? Hey, Boaz, welcome. Uh, yeah, so we are on the north side of the city of Pittsburgh, as you can see from the background, almost right underneath the McKees Rocks Bridge. This is our main wastewater treatment facility where 24-7, 365 since 1959. We've been treating currently today up to about 250 million gallons per day of capacity. The plan for today is to go and show you some background locations that most folks don't get access to at the wastewater treatment plant. And it looks like we're like going back in time over here. How old is this equipment? Right, so this is original 1959 equipment that was installed when the plant first went into operation. This was some of the electrical switchgear controls that were in the process of actually replacing. In 1959, even though this isn't functional anymore, this would have been probably the state-of-the-art technology for telemetry that reported back to the operators at the treatment plant. So on the map, you see red and green colors. Red would be an alarm condition. Green would be normal. The system was constructed in the late 50s. 1958, there was no Elkisan. So wastewater treatment in the region went right to the river, the Ohio, the Ma, and the Allegheny. There was nothing. So, like, straight from your toilet into the river? That is correct. So there might have been some small on but 1958, you have a robust city with a, a lot of industries. All of those wastes prior to 1959 would have directly gone into the river untreated. Okay, and you said through these doors, this is sort of where the process starts. All right, so here we are. On the other side of that wall, it's a 40-foot diameter. It's a 100-foot deep tank. That's where all of the wastewater today, probably about 200 million gallons, is being discharged into. Okay, I didn't think this was going to happen, but now we're actually looking into sewage. How exciting. <laughs> well, I see they're like little, yeah, make sure not to drop the camera, Annie. Um, we see their little bottles floating around in there. I don't want to lead in too much. It's a little terrifying. Right, so you're looking in the top of the wet well. That's the 40-foot diameter, 100-foot deep tank where all the waste from the region are. That's about 60 feet of wastewater that's in there that you see right now. I'm surprised it doesn't smell worse. Like, it just smells very vaguely of sewage, but not bad at all. Right, so we're pretty proud of the odor control facilities that we have here, not only for the employees that have to work here, but definitely the folks up on Brighton Heights. And if you put your hand over the window right here, you can feel the air actually being pulled into the window, and that's part of the odor control facilities and duct work that we have through the facility. There's really no moving parts in the wet well, but when we were down looking at the pumps down below, there's a valve that separates the pump from the wet well. Valves aren't meant to last forever, and the only way that you can replace a valve is by going into the wet well and plugging the hole, plugging the large pipe that goes over to the valve. So. You guessed it, we took the hatch off the wet well over there. We hired a scuba dive team that, not your normal scuba divers, but the dirty job scuba divers. And the scuba divers came in, they went down while the plant was in full operation in 60 feet of wastewater in a yellow basket. They had to go down in that wastewater and hand place those big blocks against the wall to provide a physical barrier between the wet side and the dry side. I did feel bad for the one guy whose suit leaked. Oh my gosh, really? So you're just like hosing off like crazy after. It's a once in a lifetime for us and that's a testament to the folks that ultimately ended up building and constructing the facility. It was, it was meant to last forever and this wet well has never been taken out of service nor does it really have any way to be taken out of service. Oh my god, this goes down like a I don't even know. It's like into the center of the earth. So hopefully you're not scared of heights, but you're looking down about 100 feet below where we're standing, the lowest point in Allegheny County, and that's where the large pumping equipment is that's around our wet well that's taking the wastewater out of the bottom of the tank, pumping it up that vertical column of pipe over top of those brightly painted horseshoe shapes pipes, and then gravity is going to take it through the rest of the plant. All the wastewater that comes from where we were just at at the wet well actually comes through this building. And this is a pretty simple building, and all it's doing is screening out the large material out of the wastewater that isn't human waste. And in a lot of cases, it's the things that are floating on top of the wastewater, rags or other debris. You're screening that material out, and we'll go ahead and take it to a landfill. Okay, so it looks like there's some big digging project happening here. Uh, yeah, it's it's certainly a big one. It's about $100 million worth of a big one. So what you're looking at underneath us right now is a large 10-foot diameter pipe that ultimately is going to allow us to treat up to 600 million gallons per day. So this is our East Headworks project. It's going to allow flows that 
right now, unfortunately, during rain events, don't make their way to the plant and they get discharged to the river. They'll be transitioned over into these channels and the facility that we just went through, it'll be screened, it'll screen that material as well. After it comes from the pump station, we've got rid of the, as much of the non-human waste as we can, it goes into the primary tank. So what I'd like to do is have you go down this ladder, we'll go down at the bottom, we'll go into the, the empty tank, talk a little bit about what the, the tank does. Obviously it's out of service, it's been flushed a little bit, so there shouldn't be an awful lot of odors in there. It's, it's safe to go down. If you're adventurous to jump down the ladder, let's go. Well, this is crazy down here, and just and it's even crazier to imagine this football field size space full of sewage. That's what it does. Pretty simple process. So what's on the bottom gets scraped off the bottom, and it's just gravity. So there's no chemical addition. It's a natural process. It probably removes about 60% of the pollution that's in the wastewater. And you say that no one really has been down here other than Alcasan employees. So we're like the first. Uh, you certainly are the first from the outside that have been there other than a vendor or somebody that's coming in to repair it. But certainly from any of the local media, Boaz, you are number one on the list having come into a primary said tank at a wastewater treatment facility. Yeah, we're like setting records at Yenzer Backstage Pass. This is exciting. It's just like my sewage has been here before, probably. It has. <laughs> as well as everybody else's. <laughs> So the interesting part of these tanks is that ultimately the wastewater that leaves these tanks becomes food for microorganisms. And ultimately that's the next part of the process that we're going to take a look at. When you look at what you see in front of you, it sure doesn't look very good. Uh, it looks worse than probably any of the wastewater you had seen. Fortunately for us, it is a very vibrant process of biological microorganisms. The bubbles are there, just like your fish tank at home. Any living organism needs a lot of air, and it ultimately needs some food. The surprising part of what you see here is the next part of the process. This will almost look drinking water quality, again, with no chemical addition at all by the time we get to the end of the next process. So this is looking a lot less brown over here. So that water that we just saw is actually going into the center chamber. So when you look in the middle of this clarifier, that's where the very discolored wastewater and microorganisms enter into this tank. And it stays in here for, again, about two hours time period where the discolored material simply just settles out at the bottom of these tanks. And if you look underneath that big metal structure, you see some small openings that are down there. That's where we vacuum up all the bugs. We suck them off the bottom of the tank, and then we go ahead and pump them back to the aeration basin to reseed the process itself. Again, no chemical addition, a very tried and true clarifier design that you would see at a lot of typical wastewater treatment plants. So we've put hard hats on because now we're really in the middle of a construction zone. Yeah, so we're at the North End Construction. It's a hundred plus million dollar project that ultimately is going to extend what you see behind us. So from the circular tanks, the water will come here through this channel, through those tubes into the river. That's correct. So we will go ahead and chlorinate it after it left those clarifiers, that clean water that left it. This is going to be the east channel. And as we turn the corner here, I'm not sure if it's as long as a football field, but again, it's pretty close. It's gonna go the whole way down to that end. It's gonna turn and come back to this end. It's gonna make one more turn, and ultimately it's gonna go out that direction. Wow, it feels like I'm in the movie Labyrinth right now. This is wild. If I leave you, you're on your own. <laughs> Yeah, so from construction purposes, what you see right now is a little bit of the river making its way back into the construction area. Ultimately, that wall that was built along the river will be opened up, and that will be our normal discharge of wastewater. Okay, so we've got a bucket of water coming out from the discharge area here. Oh, wow, well, this looks a lot different than it did, gosh, probably just a few hours ago. So this really looks like crystal clear water. Yep, so that's 9 to 12 hours after that uh, very polluted wastewater that you saw make its way into the wet well. After all the bugs did what they needed to do and we settled out all the activated sludge and the majority of the pollution out of the wastewater. We threw some chlorine in there to kill as many of the bad bugs as we can. We put one more chemical to get rid of some excess chlorine and that's what you have. So. Looking at it, certainly uh, with very minimal chemical addition. As you can see, that Ohio River, uh, that's a massive body of water. So we really were a small contribution to the water quality in the region. 
Uh, certainly during dry weather days, we do a tremendous job. During wet weather days, those overflows, that's what the billion dollar program, the clean water program that we have is in place for, is to deal with those overflows that occur during rain events. So we're looking at a conveyor belt of what sort of honestly looks like garden soil. Oh, I'm glad you think so. It's a little bit more organically rich than maybe just uh, regular garden soil. So that is the waste byproduct from uh, our dewatering process. So in the tanks that we were in that were enclosed, whatever was floating on the top and whatever sank to the bottom, we pumped those over to our centrifuges. Um, we had a polymer to bind, to bind the solids together. We spin it real fast and what comes out is dewatered sludge. So that is mostly human waste that's in there. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but it's still 70% water. So it doesn't look like that that's mostly water, but that's 70% water. And on an annual basis, we produce about 110,000 tons per year of that, round the clock. So what do you do with all that? So we have two viable disposal options currently right now for us. So one option is we take that product and we bring in pebble limestone and we crush that limestone into a powder. We blend that with that material and that takes the pH above 12. That increases the temperature for pathogen reduction in general in the state of Pennsylvania. It allows us to haul it off site in landfills if we chose to. We would prefer not to landfill it. Yeah. So the other disposal option of that same material is to haul it off site and to spread it as an agricultural additive on crops to be consumed by animals. So and, and essentially, it becomes a fertilizer for animal consumptions of those crops. So like cow or pig feed or whatever. The other third of what we produce ultimately gets incinerated. So we actually burn it. So we take that product and we pump it into a multi-story vessel that's filled with a specialized sand. We heat that sand up to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And we take that product and we go ahead and pump it into that incinerator. So what that does is that takes about 60 or 70,000 tons per year of that and reduces it down to about 8,000 tons per year of this. And that's just ash. So clearly- It's like coffee grounds. Right, so you've gotten rid of all of the moisture and it heats about a half to two thirds of this facility by burning that human waste to produce steam to ultimately heat the facility. So I just wanna take a second. So burning human waste heats your facility in the winter. That's like mind blowing. Uh, yeah, so that's part of the energy recovery process. And depending upon times of year and seasonal strategies, we have to have diverse disposal options to be able to get rid of the material. Otherwise it accumulates in the tanks and then we violate our permit. So we're fortunate to have a variety of different disposal options. Well, it's certainly impressive to see. And thank you so much for touring us through all this stuff. This was incredible. I can't tell you how appreciative we are of you coming down and having an interest in coming to a wastewater treatment plant. I hope you find it as interesting as those of us that do work here on what we do every day, as well as also the multi-billion dollar program that we have going forward to again, help improving the water quality in the region.